So my, my name is Helen He. I work at NERSC User Engagement Group, talking about running jobs on Corey today. Here's my outline. I'm going to talk about some introductions and give um, batch script examples, and then I'll mention um, more, uh, advanced running jobs options, and then we'll talk about affinity and how do you monitor jobs and what are some best practices for running jobs. So at NERSC, we have different types of jobs. Query is a uh, massive simulation and also data intensive system. So it has mostly parallel jobs um, using small number of cores up to, up to the full capacity and also lots of small sort of serial type of jobs, pleasantly parallel simulation of data analysis jobs. We have a batch scheduler. It's not first in first out. There's some um, schedulers based on priority and other combinations. <coughs> we um, support debug jobs and interactive jobs. You can help you to um, make sure your jobs are good before doing some large pro production runs. And run times also varies. The way is that so we could be fair to our to support our over seven thousand users' jobs. The two types of nodes: logging nodes and compute nodes. Logging nodes mostly for editing, compile, submit your batch jobs, and sometimes you run very small, short serial utilities of applications, and they are Haswell Haswell uh, type of um, logging nodes. The compute nodes they also have Haswell log uh, and type and also KNL type, the two different architectures. So if you build a binary run on uh, fork as well, it does run on KNL, but not vice versa because of the more um, inst assembly instructions that are supported on KNL, but not on Haswell. Once you have your um, allocated compute nodes, you have it um, mostly dedicated, except one of the shared, um, shared type of QoS that allow you to share nodes with others. I want to show you um, a, how does a compute node, how does the Slurm recognize um, a compute node with the number of cores numbering and also um, just getting some background of the um, NUMA node and different memory access uh, distance, etc. So for Haswell node, um, there are 32 physical cores in two sockets and each socket is a NUMA domain. So we call them NUMA domain zero and NUMA domain one. And in NUMA domain zero, there are 16 cores numbered zero to 15, but also numbered 32 to 47. So the green numbers are um, actually, we call them zero and 32 are on the same physical core, but they are two uh, logical cores, meaning there are actually two hyper threads per core on um, each um, physical core. There are a few ways on the right side to tell you how to find out this information so that we get to um, plot this diagram for you. And when um, there are memories attached to each socket or each NUMA domain, and a core access to memory local to itself, it's faster than it has to access memory on the remote uh, NUMA domain. So when we're running jobs, we have to take care of this affinity stuff. Uh, I'll talk about this more later. Here's a um, example KNL compute node. There are different modes. Um, the mode we're using by default now is called quad cache. Um, there are 68 physical cores, and each core has four hyper threads. So in Slurm's eye, um, it has 272 CPUs per node. There's a DDR memory, but also some high bandwidth memory. Um, it's called HPM, HBM or MCD RAM um, in general. Uh, it is, uh, in the quad cache mode, it is considered as a cache um, for the memory. So in this mode, actually, there is only one new domain. <clears throat> there are other types of um, KNL nodes that you have can reservate by reservation only do have different uh, number of numeric domains then also have to worry about memory access. But um, in quad cache, it's basically you can sort of view it as a memory homogeneous, homogeneous on the node, but except it has four cores, uh, four hyper threads per core and some of the numbers here, zero, 68, 136, 204 are on the same physical core and all the way down to here. And some numbers here, because we're gonna use it later to, to show you the affinity stuff as well. So when you're submitting a batch job, you would have a batch script prepared. Inlet has some directives to ask for resources 
to schedule your job, you ask for how long your job needs and what type of uh, notes, what type of QoS, etc. And then you would submit to the batch system uh, either via S batch, and then with with S batch you submit in the queue, and then you come back, forget about it, come back and check your results. Or you do S alloc, which is interactive. You would get a prompt back um, on a compute node, and then you can watch your job run live, submitting run live. So here is a simple illustration. There's a logging node in it. You submit to its S batch on S alloc. And we ask you not to run big executables on logging nodes because it's a shared resources. You're going to impact other people's responses, um, interactive response. And don't do S run directly on logging nodes. We would like you to do this after you S batch and S alloc. You get onto a um, head node. You get onto the head compute node of the compute and nodes pool that your job uh, is allocated to. On this head compute nodes, um, everything in your batch script except the S run line is run on this head compute node. And then when, after you, you know, do the pre-staging, you set up your input, et cetera, work, and then you issue the S run command, this S run command will start parallel jobs on all the compute nodes, including this head compute node. Then you distribute your work onto the compute node. And then after that's run, if you do something else, it will run on the head compute node again. So I'll show you some batch script examples. And my very first hello world example, you have um, a, a shell and then uh, lots of uh, S batch options and an S run command. I'm not talking about details yet. I'll show it later slides. So S batch and you have into the queue or you do S alloc wait for a session and you do an S round hello word in this session. So now let's just go to the, uh, some details of the sample batch scripts. The first line here is you have to have a shell because everything other than S round, you want a shell uh, to, to be able to execute those commands. So you special specify which shell. And also Slurm has a default um, uh, <clears throat> default feature that it, um, it uh, there's a, basically actually you have a way by, by our configuration, it's default that you get all the environment automatically imported. So you have some, you know, module load, you have some ENV setting, run variable setting, and then you have a script. When you do S batch, all this environment is imported into your batch uh, job um, environment. Here is um, some other flags we just want to talk about. Um, dash dash QoS, you would say which, which, um, which QoS want to submit to use a regular, uh, premium, low, et cetera, how many nodes you want, and how long I need uh, for one hour here, and what type of um, nodes I want. Here is um, Haswell. You see the, the flags here, um, it's called long name for the options, and we're gonna show you short names in the later slides as well. They're equivalent. Mm. Uh, my slides are not progressing. Let's just so here I did use short names now. So originally it was dash dash Q O S. Now I can use just dash Q. The difference is short with between short is dash Q and the space regular. In the long name is dash dash Q O S equals regular. So there's also always there's dash dash and equal for the long name and one dash and space for the short name. And an example, in this example, I have um, another few um, options here. They are, they're optional. Um, so for example, I want um, dash L, meaning license for scratch file system. By specifying, specifying this, when the scratch file system has, is having some issues, it will block your job from starting so that you won't fail immediately. And you could give your job a name, dash J, my job, a job name. Um, it's easier for you to recognize what, what this is about. And you could also specify other things like specify what names to stand and out file, which account to charge, whether you want to receive some emails, um, et cetera. Um, here's an MPI example. So I asked for 40 nodes and my S1 line has little n, one, uh, 1280. So if we divide by that, it means I'm running 32 MPI tasks per node in this example. My code.exe 
here. And notice I have uh, some other flags besides little dash n of, of MPI tasks here, dash c and dash the CPU bind. So dash c means um, how many logical cores I want to be allocated for each MPI task. So for the Haswell node, as we mentioned about, there's a 32 physical cores and two hyper threads. So there are 64 hyper threads, 64 logical threads per uh, node. When I'm running 32 MPI tasks per node, I would like to give two logical cores per MPI task. So here is the C value about, so it's, it's two. Um, and we also find out that we need dash CPU bind equals cores, especially when the node is not fully um, occupied. It's like you're running less, a fewer MPI tasks than available um, physical cores. We want to, to the CPU bind to each of the physical cores so that it's also better for the affinity, especially for KNL that we will mention later. Here in this example, it is still an MPI code. Um, sometimes your source code may have OpenMP enabled and you, or some libraries will use uh, OpenMP by default. But for example, you want to run a pure MPI code, you want to make sure you're running only one OpenMP thread, you would like to include uh, this setting OpenMP num threads equals one here so that you're not accidentally running many, CP, uh, many threads that you don't um, intend to. Okay, so, um, so for example, uh, I talked about MPI jobs. What if I have a serial job? I only want to run on one physical core. So if I submit to a regular QoS, then it'll, I will be charged by the whole node, but also I'm also wasting the other, say, 31 physical cores on Haswell. So we provide a shared QoS. In, in that QoS, you are, a, your jobs are um, sharing node with other users. Um, by default, you get one core, one physical core, but if, and, and by default, if it's one, then you get a total number of memory minus QoS, minus uh, OS memory, and then divide by uh, 32, which is the available uh, memory for the applications, is about uh, two gigabytes per um, shared job, for example. What if you want your uh, around um, like, four gigabytes of memory, but still on one physical core, you could ask in your um, batch script dash dash memory a little bit more, and uh, it, it'll calculate and allocate two physical cores for you. You still run on one core, but you get two cores of memory worth for yourself. And um, so the, the whole node will schedule fewer jobs total. So this QoS is only available on Haswell and also you'll be charged less, which is good. You could run some small parallel jobs there as well, and you're putting S run, you know, asking for a little bit more memory or asking for dash N for a bit more number of cores, then you could put S run there to run some smaller parallel jobs, also charged only for the number of cores you use, which is uh, benefit economical. Um, but if you do run a serial uh, job, uh, we suggest not to put in S run in front of it because there's an overhead. So I mentioned about debug and interactive, interactive jobs. We do reserve nodes for these two QoSs so that you can get jobs through uh, much faster. For the debug, uh, there are, you can ask for a maximum 512 nodes, but only for 30 minutes. There's a limit of run limit and sublimit, submit limit per user. Uh, you could do s alloc to dash q debug, or you could do uh, put, put together a batch script with uh, qos each equals debug, and then you s batch your script and wait for your answer. For the interactive qos, you can only do s alloc. S batch won't allow you because it's supposed to be as uh, completely interactive. Um, we highly recommend this because um, it either gives you a node within five minutes, or it'll reject tell you. Um, tells you that there's no nodes available for you. There's also run limit, submit limit. Um, the good thing is that it has max more time for four, four hours instead of debug this only 30 minutes. But you can only run, use up to 64 nodes with Haswell and KNL combined per project, not per user. 
So if some of your colleagues are using, you may not be able to get nodes, while some people from other projects can still get nodes. Um, there are some, some um, uh, documentations and some commands there. You can find out who in your project is using these nodes. And you can, you know, talk to them and, and collaborate. Okay, uh, next I'm going to talk about advanced running jobs options. So many um, other ways to run besides the, uh, besides the um, basic um, batch script with 1S1 in it, either serial jobs or uh, parallel jobs. So we could, you know, bundle jobs. We can, this is the list of things here. Um, I'm going to actually have at least one slide per thing. So I'm just quickly um, skip this one. Bundle jobs. Um, there are two ways. You can either bundle them with multiple S runs run sequentially. Here is left side is sequentially, or you could run them simultaneously. So the difference here is that with sequential uh, S runs, you do multiple S runs there. Then you ask for a number of nodes, the maximum number of nodes that these S runs need. But you also ask for the com combined wall hours of these S runs in your batch script. For um, simultaneously, you ask the number of nodes you would ask for is the total number of nodes that's needed. And hours is longest hour of this as well. So you, in order to, for this to run simultaneously, simultaneously, you need to put an M percent at the end and wait so that once S run is submitted, you know, process the other S run. And with the wait, it would also not exit immediately once the sales jobs are submitted, you know, wait until your jobs finish. Number of nodes here, just remember these, at each S run is exclusive on the nodes, so they don't share um, the cores on each node. For example, the first S, you don't add little in the numbers after the little end to calculate how many nodes you need. You have to add, calculate how many nodes each S run needs and add them together to ask in your S batch. The job arrays. Sometimes you have many jobs with very similar um, needs that, so in, in, instead of submitting 10 of these jobs individually, you'd rather submit a job array contain those 10 jobs. And it's a, a convenient um, environment variable for you to use as alarms, as alarm array job ID, then you can manipulate, you know, prepare in advance for each of the small jobs. Um, put your input and things in each subdirectory. So that when you submit just one, and later on when you monitor or manage, you can still treat them as you know you could as you could cancel all of them, we change things in it. Um, but on the other hand, when Slurm scheduling those jobs, they are actually treated in, as individual jobs. So you did submit ten jobs, and it'll, it'll schedule them one at a time, um, independently. Dependency jobs. Sometimes you have jobs like you want to start second job only after the first one finishes or after first one finishes successfully. So you, there's a way to do that in S batch. In S batch script, you uh, you can do uh, flag dash dash dependency. After OK means after this job is successful, or um, after any means after this job is done, whether successful or not. I'm submitting my second job. Or in a script, you can do capital D after OK. You do need the job ID of the first job. So you always submit first job, get a job ID, and then you can use it in your dependency chain. Variable time jobs. Um, it's because of the batch scheduler, we have limitations of maximum one hours of the, each QoS is allowed. Right now, it's 48, except some um, special queues, mostly 48 here uh, at NERSC. So if you uh, want to run multiple jobs, uh, um, there's a way allow you to do this is you could, um, if your jobs have the um, checkpoint reschedule, uh, checkpoint restarting um, capability, then you could split your jobs into smaller chunks. And the, the <clears throat> variable times, the way to run it, you would have lots of, of special flags here. For example, for this job, I say, I say, for example, I need my job to run actually for a total of 96 hours. Um, but and, and for each of the little chunks, I'm okay with as long as it's two hours, um, two, <clears throat> two hours, um, a chunk I, between two hours and then maximum of each individual job is 48 hours. 
So if I put that in my script, I may get chunks of any time, anywhere between two hours and 48 hours. Then, um, then when this job is finished, I did my own checkpoint restart, and then the scheduler will requeue your job automatically with this dash dash requeue flag. <clears throat> so that it all, um, also remembers how many um, hours your job's already run and then continue for you. So there are other, some, some special um, scripts in there uh, as well and flags here. Signal means I, my, my job will be interrupted um, 60 seconds and I give it 60 seconds to do the checkpoint after each little chunk of job. Um, the checkpoint command is your script to do checkpointing or if it, there's nothing to do, you can leave it empty as well. Checkpoint equals empty is fine. And there's a setup uh, uh, script you have to in, include it in your script and then you have to requeue your job with a function track about this um, <coughs> special um, <coughs> uh, flag. Then you do a regular S run and with an ampersand and wait. Um, so, so with this capability, because you're asking for time minimum equals um, two hours, we have a special QoS that's it not has to be tied to the variable job, but it's very beneficial to do it because you uh, in the Q, Flex QoS we give you huge um, amount of charging discount, seventy five percent now. So you only charge one a quarters of um, um, hours used. So because of this, you know, minimum time minimum of um, of you, you can only ask for a time minimum of up to two hours so that these jobs, like when scheduler would try to, to find um, lots of scheduling holes, we call them backfill holes, when scheduling those small chunks of jobs, it won't affect the uh, starting of bigger jobs. So your jobs may much it'd be easier to um, get through. This is beneficial to you. And for us, it's also, you know, help us to um, improve our system utilization. So flex QoS to do variable time jobs um, is a good thing to do. Um, check out these uh, documentations, please. <clears throat> so we talked about overrun QoS earlier as well. Uh, when your project zero and active balance, you have to you can submit to the Q overrun QoS or uh, overrun shared if you want to uh, use shared nodes. Nodes priority zero charge, you <clears throat> and you have to do dash Q overrun uh, explicitly with uh, time. You also have have to include time minimum of up up to four hours in your script. The workflow manage, <clears throat> management tools. Um, if I have a large number of similar jobs and if I have some other, you know, I want some automation or moving data, multi-step processing, this is thing, the tools you should use. One such example is I have say 10,000 of one core jobs. Please don't do for I equals one to one 10,000 as from my eight out out. This is really inefficient. And also because of uh, the continuous S round <clears throat> with, with no um, time space interval, it really overwhelms our scheduler. There are a few tools, um, GNU Perl, Task Farmer, Fireworks, etc. So there's a talk um, on workflow to workflows um, explicitly this afternoon for details. Uh, burst buffer is um, another thing that, uh, for, especially for users, jobs with large I.O. need, it's um, very good for you. You can improve um, your um, I.O. bandwidth because the, uh, these nodes, are, burst buffer, are located uh, directly um, next to your compute nodes with more um, metadata servers as well. So there's also a special talk this afternoon on burst buffer for usage examples. Shifter is a like similar compatible to the popular Docker container. So user can run Docker containers on their systems, which allows you to use your own custom software environment so that you can maintain, you know, your, you don't have to rebuild your um, applications. You can manage reproducibilities, lots of uh, benefits. Uh, we also have a separate Shifter talk this afternoon. Um, X for jobs. <clears throat> Sometimes you have um, a big, big, big production round, but also your data is not on Cori on Scratch. They're actually on tapes in the uh, archive storage. So if you put those um, preparing, um, transferring data and 
before and after jobs into your large simulation run is it is really cost you lots of allocation hours so the way uh, we we created this expert qos which actually runs on some of the logging nodes that's why it's on a different slurm scheduler named es query so you have to add dash capital m es query in your batch scheduler uh, batch script then you could run regular htar hsi stuff to get your data to your uh, to the location on, on the Cori local file systems. And if you later on, you actually want to monitor those jobs, you would also mod module load ES Cori and then do the regular um, queue monitoring scripts to, to see these jobs. Big mem jobs as well, um, they are running on some special large memory uh, logging nodes. Um, again, dash capital M ES Cori, and then you do QoS uh, big mem. And then you could ask for how much memory you need for your um, application. Okay, are there any questions so far? Uh, no, actually, there's been a few in, in the doc, but we've answered them all. Thanks. We go on with the affinity on uh, the process thread and memory affinity. So, as I mentioned, um, the, the affinities is actually because of the uh, where your memory is, with your memory is relative to your physical core, with your um, <clears throat> threads are, CPUs are, it, it um, will affect your job performance. So process memory affinity means how to bind your MPI tasks to CPUs. Thread memory, a thread affinity means how to bind threads to CPUs allocated to each of the MPI process. And memory affinity means how to allocate memory from specific NUMA domains. And uh, with the correct affinity, it's, it's a lower hanging fruit uh, if, as, as long as you understand it, but also without it, your performance could hurt many, many um, folds. So it's, it's, easy, it's, it's, it's essential to do this. As also, it's the base for you if you want to do further uh, performance optimizations. We also want to uh, promote OpenMP standard settings, um, such as OMP proc bind, OMP places. Um, instead of some of the vendor specific um, settings. There's a Intel setting, there are Cray settings, so we try to promote uh, standard settings. There's a page uh, docs uh, in the documentations, jobs slash affinity with lots of details and best practices and explanations there. Please check it out. So what if I just run a naive SROM, especially say on KNL nodes, around 16 MPI tasks and eight open MP threads on 68 core KNL. I do set my open piece threads, I do set my open piece settings, then I just run N dash N16, my executable. It it turns out it's really a mess. It gets you the thread zero on rank zero and thread zero on rank one. They're, they are overlapping on the same physical core. So these numbers are the the, the numbering I showed you earlier. So zero and zero are on the same um, uh, physical core, of course, and 144 is physical core eight, and another again, um, but basically without the dash, other dash, dash C and dash CPU bind, you gain this yourself into a completely overlapping MPI rack ranks on the same cores, which is bad. So the reason is because 68 is not divisible by number of MPI tags, which is 16 here. So what we do is we, let's say, let's make it more even this, this, um, divisible by wasting four cores. So now we're dealing with only 64 cores. And with 64 cores, we have uh, 64 times four, which is 256 um, logical CPUs. And then you can just distribute these 256 logical CPUs to your number of tasks per node, which is 16 in this case. Then you do dash N16, um, dash C16 here. Dash N16 is 16 um, MPI tasks per node. That C16 is 16 CPU logical, 16 logical CPUs per MPI task. Then you're also adding the CPU bind equals cores. With that, it's now you're spreading out um, your tasks and threads. So I have this, how, how it shows that it spreads out. So the MPI rank zero is on these four physical cores and there are eight uh, open MP threads. There are four here and four here. Uh, these numbers are the logical cores on the same physical core. So 68, 136, 204 is on the same physical core, zero. 
So now your MPI rank zero is here on the full course. MPI rank one is on the next full course. They're uh, nice, nicely distributed and uh, with the good thread affinity. So this is um, basically a repeat of these are important. And we also mentioned, you, let's use OMP proc bind equals true and OMP places equals threads for all of our compilers. So here's an example of, of the course of 68 cores here. And in this example, we have um, 64 um, MPI tasks per node. I'm asking for two nodes, the uh, N128. So 64 open MP, uh, MPI tasks. Each has four logical cores. So MPI rank zero is on this core zero because four are uh, logical CPUs. And with my OMP number threads equals four, also the binding, I'm getting the threads also bind nicely on each of the logical cores. Um, there's a few ways to check the affinities. We, buy, we, um, we actually compile some of the binaries for the Intel compiler to check how you, if you want to check on Cori, uh, uh, for the MPI cores, uh, codes, or for um, hybrid codes, for and, and for different compilers, for example. So what you do is you replace this little binary um, with, uh, <clears throat> replace your own application um, executable with this little binary and run it, and I'll tell you your affinity. So like in, your, in this case, you have 32 MPI tasks. You can check whether uh, each M MPI task, uh, the affinity settings are correct. Because uh, with this S run, you also have all these S batch flags. Basically, you will need to check if your S batch flags. And along with this S run um, option is giving you whatever the correct affinity you can get. The OpenMP 5.0 standard has also two OpenMP environment variables um, implemented. And it's available for all the compilers now available um, installed on Cori right now. So you can set equals true, and you can set a format. And with these, um, these are things to, to uh, print, which holds on and what I'm, my um, process ID and number of threads, which affinity is it on, so that you can have your own custom um, format as well to, to check your affinity. Um, also, we do have a job script generator. You can put in which some of the um, parameters for your job and it's available on mynurse.gov uh, under jobs, job script generator. It'll give you a template of your job script and you can just uh, add more, you know, other things, email your output um, or, you know, change your job executables, etc. So uh, this is also uh, very good for you. So on to monitoring jobs. So jobs, <clears throat> um, jobs are scheduled uh, by your <clears throat> priority and other uh, combinations, how many jobs you submitted. Because for example, you submit 10,000 jobs, it would not block the other user after you submit one job. There are a few com um, commands to use. I'm um, going to have some slides about these. And then there's a, on the uh, web, my.nurse.gov, you can check Cori queues and Cori backlogs and, and queue wait times. I think um, Steve showed those um, earlier. There's also live uh, status. And in the iris, you can also check, click the jobs tab, and you can see all your own jobs and how much each job uh, was charged. So SQ is a native Slurm batch queue display. Uh, SQ A show by default is dash A. It shows all users' jobs. And if you want your own jobs, you do SQ dash U, my uh, user ID, uh, username, or display your own jobs. So NERSC has a, a custom um, SQ wrapper. It's called SQS. It's in the transition right now. So currently you go in, uh, you see uh, you have um, SQS and SQS2. They're pretty similar. Um, SQS has some, um, you know, scheduled start. Uh, we decide not to use this anymore because of our also um, configuration um, tuning at, at NERSC. It's not needed anymore. But also um, the um, SQS2, uh, we are trying to um, recommend. We're, we're trying, we are um, just going to rename it to SQS in July if it's, um, it's um, <clears throat> There are no, no issues reported. It is more flexible. It takes all the um, allowed flags in the native SQ. And you could also put in, we, we give you a default um, option, but you can override it. And 
So it is more flexible. It won't uh, implement everything as in SQS. Some of the things you can use um, other um, as, um, Storm commands to achieve that. But with SQS, be flexible is the goal and simple. It, simple and flexible is our goal um, for go ongoing um, Storm monitoring. As control, you can, there's a one particularly useful command as control show job and your job ID. So if you have multiple jobs in the queue, you want to remind yourself which each job is. And with that command, you can find out which QoS you submit to, when did you submit, and where is the job um, submit from, and your command is, your job script is, which is uh, useful. Um, S account is for checking your jobs, complete jobs, and also jobs currently in the queue. And you can put in lots of flags, start time, end time, and some of the flags you're interested, um, primarily interesting to find out all your job, <clears throat> all your past jobs, or uh, currently jobs in the queue. So, yeah, so now I'm going to talk about some uh, best practices for running jobs. So first question is, where should I run my jobs? Uh, which, you know, has or okay now, and which QoS, etc. So the factors to consider is uh, whether, how long the, each wait time is, you know, much it current back, if you check backlogs up um, in on my nurse, you'd see backlog on KNL is much smaller than on Haswell, because especially KNL is four times bigger than Haswell. Um, and also you want to check the your, your, your own throughput depending on what type of job submit to. And you want to check on the charging. Um, KNL is cheaper per node wise than Haswell. And also there's a large jobs discount um, for 1024. The flex and low also with discounts are only also available on KNL. On the other hand, shared and real time, real time is by special permission, but shared is only available on Haswell nodes. You can check um, interactive big man max for so these are the considerations. This, the, these are, uh, this is the current queue policy. You can see which the list of QoS and there are maximum nodes allowed, maximum wartime time allowed. Uh, how many jobs you can submit up to this number, what is runtime limit, run limit means in simultaneous running jobs, and those their relative priorities and their charging factor. Most of them are one on, on Haswell and premium is two here. Uh, shared, shared should, should be, uh, is, is a one, but also there's a note for it. It only charges the number of cores on this node that your job uses. Okay, now as well, we have, um, low and flux here. Um, so the charging factor here is much cheaper. Overrun is zero. So the charging, how do you charge? Um, you, unit is NERSC hours and different um, architecture charging factor, the QoS charging factor, and the little discount here. Um, so I give an example. It's charged by the hours used by your job, not by the work clock request time, and charged by entire duration of the, all the nodes you um, allocated for, even if you don't use them. So number of nodes times time times charge, architecture charge factor times QoS charge factor is what is charged for. If you have multiple projects, if you want to use specific project, you can put in dash A and the project name to charge your jobs to that account. Char job scheduling, um, I mentioned job, it, um, they are not first in first out. So what are some considerations are, what are how um, we scheduling here? First, just to mention everything is due, you know, we do constant monitoring and tuning for best utilization and also for the fairness for the, for the, for the users. The, each job has its priority value by mostly by which QoS is and by job age and very small value of, um, of fair share. There are two storm scheduler. One is the main scheduler. The other one is called the backfield scheduler. So every few minutes, the main scheduler will check the jobs and schedule them in order of this priority and for a few days, to into the future, not too long because it takes too long to schedule, but also it's dynamic. If you schedule too far away, too far, it's not, it's not gonna be useful because it's gonna change. And we do um, 
have a thresh prior priority threshold jobs uh, below that will wait and the scheduler won't consider those yet until they age until they reach the threshold they will be considered for scheduling there's also a policy we do only consider two jobs per qos per user so if you have like 10 jobs in the regular it'll only schedule two of them until these two starting to run then you can the other two will be um, considered for scheduling on the, on the other hand, the backfield scheduler doesn't have any of these uh, restrictions. What it does is it comes in and check when the, all these, the main scheduler has scheduled the jobs and there are some holes that would allow opportunities for some smaller and shorter jobs to start. The backfield scheduler will fill those holes and run them. As long as the, starting these small jobs won't affect the start time of the jobs already scheduled by the main scheduler. So some tips to get better throughput. Obviously, if your job is shorter and smaller, it's easier to get scheduled. So just, um, consider if you can break up your uh, long jobs, use variable time, do that. And uh, you can submit short jobs before maintenance because there's a, the larger jobs or longer, longer jobs especially won't be, able to, won't be able to start. And if you are able to use FlexQoS um, with time minimum, it's easy, especially easier for your jobs to be scheduled. Also, do not request wall time clock. Just use the default largest two o'clock time allowed for each of the QoS. Try to specify as accurate as possible that you, your jobs need how, how long and how easier to get scheduled. Usually, uh, uh, sh shorter, fatter jobs are easier, even easier to schedule than um, skinner, longer jobs because of the, the backfill holes are usually for shorter period of time. If your job asks for um, the maximum work time, there's never a chance to be backfilled. Uh, some of the large jobs consideration, it it's, takes time for your uh, job executables, input, et cetera, to be staged on the compute nodes to start to run. So one of the um, tip is to do SB cast and cast your uh, executables onto the compute nodes then you as run that um, <clears throat> executable directly, which will be faster. You can even um, as back batch your input files as well. There's a um, uh, link to check this out. And also we would like to uh, recommend if you, you, you prefer, you can build uh, statically to run large jobs. The reason is because the shared um, <coughs> libraries uh, go through an extra layer of software called DVS to access um, through uh, on the on the on the file system, and also everything running from um, the global file system, your home home directory, your uh, community file systems, even um, and also through the DVS. So if you and to access the um, on the computer nodes. So basically, if you think you know, your application is statically, it it all, it all um, um, avoid these uh, dynamic library um, extra startup time. Um, Shifter can help with um, running shared libraries, but because you now with everything is in, in your uh, custom environment, there's no um, indirect getting your dynamic library. So Shifter can help with running large jobs with uh, shared libraries. And if you're using large I/O, consider use uh, burst buffer to expedite I/O. Some a few other things um, to uh, for large jobs consideration is remember to compile separately for each type of a uh, compute nodes. Um, if you compile for KNL, it will be able to utilize the, the optimization specifically for KNL. So to to run on KNL, although it although high um, password binary do run on um, binaries do run on KNL, we do recommend you build separately for KNL. And let's say running jobs from global homes is strongly discouraged because IO is not optimized. It needs to access um, the um, on compute nodes with uh, DVS and um, it's, so it's slower than scratch. And once I uh, home global home is, is, is busy, is, um, <clears throat> it will cause neg negative impact for other users, even doing an LS or you know, VI and slow, it's it gonna um, slow down the system. There's a place you can put also put out, consider to put your projects um, shared library into a global common software. We mounted read only on the computer nodes, so nobody is writing into it. 
on the compute nodes and makes it faster to your application. And for lots, lots of large um, sim number of similar jobs and workflows, you should consider to adopt workflow tools uh, for better managing your jobs. Um, more information is docs.gov slash jobs. There's also another um, different set of documentations I'm not covering in this talk. It's uh, special for query GPU nodes. Some users may have access to, but it's not for all users at all. It's only very small number of users. But if you do need to run GPU nodes um, on the GPU nodes, check out this um, documentation. And finally, if you have questions, you're always welcome to file a service ticket via help portal, help.nurse.gov. That's all I have. Any questions? Thank you.